All right, guys, I'm going to jump right into this track and field. I forgot to talk about it last week as I was on the road, but uh, our favorite, one of our favorites, Ovid Elsie's Trice Tokar picked up his third, yes. third straight pole vault championship at the he track and it? field finals. He won wow. it, so he's Dude, still got he, one. I mean, he's got to be competing in at the collegiate level, right? Where Where's he heading after this? I would think so, too. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's consistently over 14 foot, and... Well, uh, three straight titles and he's still heading into his senior year. So he's going to, Oh, he's still got another year. Oh, got another okay. year. Yeah. I, oh, thank God. I thought that was gonna be the last time this, that his name was uttered on this podcast. I'm glad we got another <laughs> year. of it. <laughs> uh, New Lothrop won the D three baseball regional championship two nothing over Hemlock, but lost the quarterfinal to Detroit Edison 12 to four. Alex Hennigy tossed a complete game shutout in the regional championship game. New Lothrop's Mallory Hero in softball won two games in their D three regionals seven to four over late and 3-2 over Cass City in the regional final. I think they were playing here as we started to go on the air. I don't know. They were behind two to nothing uh, to Claire, so I don't know how that one ended up. Owasso lost in the regional semifinal to North Branch, 4-3. to three. Lexi Hemker went two for four with an RBI. Now, uh, any news from Perry, Matt? Yeah, so Perry, obviously, as a team, didn't have the success that they wanted. Um, they didn't didn't make it very far in, in the playoffs, but, you know, had a pretty solid season overall. And But my my nephews play for the team. We've talked about him before. Um, one, one nephew is a junior, so he'll be back next year. Other nephew is a freshman, um, Brady and Eli. Brady's the junior. Eli's the freshman. So they'll both be back on the team next year. But Brady really had a great season. I mean, I'm sure he – is going to be looking forward to next year because he'll be full go. I mean, senior, you know, coming mm -hmm. back for a big season, but he texted me some of his awards. So they had uh, their, their banquet and I knew he, I was keeping up. I knew he had a great season, but I didn't realize he was racking up these kind of awards. He ended up on the season uh, hitting five eleven, which is, is pretty good. He, you know, high school deal. level you're, you're on, you know, and that's not to count walks, and, you know, so his, his on-base percentage, obviously higher than that, counting walks and yeah. everything. I think he even had quite a few hit by pitches. So, you, you know, you're, you're on the base quite a bit when you're, when you're hitting 511. Uh, but he ended up, um, so I'll, I'll just read his text. He said he second team all conference and he was one of 46 nominated players in his conference to make the all district and one of five of the 46. Let me read. So one of five, out of 46 to make the all regional team. Mm. So he made all district, all regional, wow, um, nice. all second, second all team, conference. all conference and um, ended up hitting five eleven. I, he, he had a, he, so he's, his big goal is to break every record that he can. I mean, he's sure. like, I want to break all the records that I can. So I asked like, so did you get any of those? And the big one he wants to break is stolen bases. He didn't, he didn't get the stolen base record that he wants, but he still got a senior year to do it. But he, um, he was second, second on the team in hits, fourth in runs scored. So, um, just trying to give him some love because he had yeah. he had a great season, and he's going to be looking forward to that senior year. You know, after after you have a great junior year in whatever sport you play, you're going into your senior year and you're just like ramped up, ready to go, oh, pretty yeah. confident. Yeah, he needs he needs he needs the stolen base record. He needs it. Yep. And so he he said he, he'll take any walk, hit by pitch, whatever, because all he wants to do is Get steal on base. bases. <laughs> Well, that goes to show you, though, that in high school sports, when it comes to all league awards, the wins matter, you know, because the kid right. with a 5'11 batting average, second team, that's that's kind of astounding, really. Yeah. You know? yeah and that's a great school. award still, but. Right. The runs, the runs scored and stolen bases and everything, but right. Yeah. yeah they were only around basically a 500 team. So yeah, right. not, not the amount of wins, but they'll, they'll be back ready to go. Go Ramblers. And by yeah, the and way, I wanted one, one more I was going to throw out, not, yeah. not to cut you off, Ted. No. So, my other nephew, one of my other nephews, to give a little more love. So, when we were interviewing Scott McNeil, mm -hmm. Gus Macker himself, I, I mentioned my nephew, Jaden, who goes to Lanesburg. And he's he's all hyped up right now because this upcoming weekend is the Gus Macker up in Ludington. Right. And his his team, I mean, they've got full on uniforms, jerseys, <laughs> shorts. I mean, they're they're ready to go. This past weekend, though, was Kerwood um, there in Owasso, and they, the three on three was back. And so his team played in the Kerwood three on three, and they actually won their division. They thought it'd be a great chance, to kind of a warm up for the Gus Macker up in Ludington. They played the Kerwood three on three. They won it. 
So I, I got pictures of him biting his medal. And my <laughs> sister said he's been wearing his medal and his shirt basically ever since <laughs> he won the tournament. I bet you he's going to wear his medal up to Ludington and, and show it off before Gus Macker starts. So, so yeah, Jaden and his buddies from Lanesburg, they're having, having a good, good time right now playing some three on three ball. Yeah. Wear his um, medal up there. Do the little intimidation to the other team. Exactly. Right? <laughs> did they um did they take scott mcneil's advice basically to rig the tournament so they could get into a lower weight and age bracket or, or did they i, I asked there? my sister if, if he listened to that and, and she said that he he didn't really want to do that he, he wants to play it straight he wants to win win you know i guess the right way or whatever right. but his team his team name is and one and ah. i wasn't sure i had a team name so back in my day and one was a really cool brand. I mean, right. obviously there's the and one, you know, basketball, you get followed, you score and one, but you know, and one, I don't even know if Jared, if you remember the brand, oh, it was, are you kidding me? The big tapes, it was, yeah, it, 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 it had staying power. It, yeah. it was still around when I came through. Yeah. I, and I don't think he realized that. I think they're just going and one, you know, like the, the term in basketball, you know, three you point followed, play. Yeah. Right. Three point play. I told him, I was like, we had a team named and one. And that was, it was like Nike. It was like, and one Nike, Obviously, Adidas and some others. So he, he thought that was pretty cool. Uh, my cool. name back that used to be Alien Invasion. I don't know where that came from, but it was creative. Alien Invasion. Not was bad. it a video game? Was it off of a I video don't know. game? I, I don't know. It was stupid, but that's what it was. So, from like Space Jam? Were you the Monstars I, I, or something? <laughs> there was, I'm trying to remember my brother's team had a, like they had like Kerwood Ballers or it was a They had custom shirts that were sweet. It was like a, it was uh what's it called when it's like a C and a C alliteration. Is that right? Oh, right. Uh, it was a very good name. I, I'm going to have to think about that, what it was, but yeah, the name Kerwood, is very important. Kerwood Cagers. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I, it was such a great like logo and branding. I'm, I'm bummed. I can't remember it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's part of the fun you remember as a youth, right? Yeah. You know, the three on three, I'm glad to see that it's, it has staying power, especially the Gus Macker. Well, yeah, that, the Gus Macker in Ludington, I, I think we shared it on our Facebook or Twitter, you know, right. something. They they extended the deadline for the Ludington uh, tournament because they were, they said they were breaking, they put it in quotations, having a, a record-breaking turnout. I awesome. think it was like of recent years since gotcha. it's kind of been Golden coming back maybe. or whatever. Yeah. Right. But it said going, going over 700 teams. Woo. And, I mean, you think about it, that's, Ludington's a good sized town, but it's not huge. So you you roll in over 700 three on three teams and their families and some friends and stuff. That's a lot of people going oh, yeah. into Ludington this weekend. That's bringing in a lot of revenue too, you know, yeah. different stores, restaurants. It, yeah, that's that's a great event for sure. Yep. By the way, you know, for people just tuning in, don't know what we're all about. We're all three Corona High School, Corona Michigan High School graduates, and they just announced their class of 2024 Hall of Fame members. And uh, just to quickly go down the list, they've uh, they've just announced that they're going to be inducting coaches Dick Moffat and John Wilcox. Both those guys were in my day and age, boys, and well deserved there. Dick well, Moffat, mine too. My, yeah, I, I, yep. Moff was my JV football coach, and and Mr. Wilcox was our middle school gym teacher, and then he was still coaching track right when i was there so yeah two two legends for sure legendary and my, and mr moffett man he was one of my one of my mentors as a kid you know i mean i, I love dick moffett man oh, that's yeah. for sure also corona cavalier contributors dave harvey and mary dumond elect elected to the class of 2024 uh don't know if they want to let dave harvey have the microphone at all because you may not uh, it may not end but <laughs> congrats to harv as a contributor but he very well could have earned it as an athlete and speaking of the athletes this one was a no-brainer first teamer noah jacobs classmate of yours jared oh, made yeah. it uh, first time on the ballot uh one of the greatest runners in corona history for sure um, Gordy Sayre, he uh, w played in my dad's era, played on my dad's 47 team, went on to play for Michigan State and Biggie Munn, won a national championship starting for the Spartans. So well-deserved for him. Stan Bosick, also a star athlete in that era. Marshawn Honky, Marshawn Honky Humphreys and Meredith Norris, tremendous uh, volleyball player, went on to play. Did she play at Michigan State, I think? Oh, yeah, big-time yeah. player for Michigan State. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, for teams, the 98 and 99 track and field state championship teams will be inducted. And the 1966 undefeated football team, Dave Harvey was the quarterback of that team, ironically enough. So 
well deserved. They decided to have more more inductees this year to kind of catch up for the COVID year. So right. well deserved. I think the uh, the ceremony is going to be sometime in December or January. I think during basketball season. So they'll be honored at halftime of a basketball game and then have a banquet on that following Saturday night. So it'll be very cool. It'll be cool to get some of the old timers together and even like the 98, 99 track teams, you know, see if a bunch of them haven't been back in Corona in a while or something like that. A little bit of a reunion. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, not to plug Jacobs insurance is the sponsor of the prep spotlight. Noah of Jacobs, course. obviously very uh, fitting, you know, <laughs> very fitting for, yep. For him to be announced on on this section of of the podcast, but yeah, that like you said, no brainer. I mean, absolutely. I mean, literally, when you look at his resume, when you start going down there, I mean, it's just like yeah. The, oh, the yeah. minute he's eligible for the Hall of Fame, put him in. Yeah, no brainer. And, and he ran collegiately for the University of Wisconsin, so that's not too shabby either. Yeah. I would like to catch up with him sometime, maybe on this podcast, and get uh, some of his thoughts on actually running in the Boston Marathon. We talked to him when he qualified, but uh, I'd like to get some of his impressions of what it was like <laughs> being in Boston. I, yeah. I say this jokingly. It seems like the guy criteria to get into this Hall of Fame is, did you run track? check and <laughs> did you wear a leather helmet when you played football that seems to be, no in between you have one of those things going for you man you're gonna get in this hall of fame pretty quick well well i mean i mean anyone who doesn't know corona does have a pretty good history of either cross country or track so you know mm-hmm. probably have a lot of su- success right. there but then you know the leather helmet thing there's a lot of mythical stuff about the corona football program some some state championships that maybe we don't really know about maybe some of those records that ted Ted rattles right. off, you know, it's kind of whether there's video or not, who was taking the statistics back then. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing, you know, for sure, maybe, maybe the records aren't a hundred percent accurate, but the win and loss record is that's for, yeah. sure. Here, here, yeah, for sure. Here's, I guess my one thing, 66 team, congrats. And we can move on. Oh, boy. I said, you're the czar of Corona sports and history. I have never once heard you utter the word 66 with any sort of memorable, I've never heard of that team. So well, I guess can you for the listeners like myself, why are they getting in? What what's yeah. so special about them? Well, I mean, I mean yeah, as you know, I grew up right across from the football field. I was 10 years old when that 66 team was there. So, I mean, it was right in the I wanted to be a water right. boy. You know, I wanted to be one of the managers of the team. And Harvey was the quarterback. Jerry Dutcher, who was inducted in the Hall of Fame, was a wide receiver. He went on to play at the University of Michigan. They had some stud linemen on that team. And I think the biggest story. Maybe you haven't heard me talk about it, but I, I've talked about it with other family members. Uh, was the fact that, you know, Corona lured Nick and Nice from New Lothrop. You know, he won a, a mythical state championship with New Lothrop. Right. And Corona was coming off an, a, an 0 9 record when they reached out to Nick and brought him over to Corona, obviously, for more money, you know, bigger school. And he brought a couple players over from New Lothrop that starred for Corona. And the 66 team was his first undefeated team at Corona. So that's kind right. of that's kind of the tie-in there. All right, you um, saw a cool story. Yeah. Uh, one final thing, speaking of Corona, they recently announced they have a new boys basketball coach. Chris Mustaine uh, is the new coach. He comes with a pretty decent resume over 20 years of coaching. He'll be teaching PE and his most recent head coaching stint was at Lansing Christian where uh, he took that team to the Breslin Center in a semifinal appearance in 2017. So don't know a whole heck of a lot more, but uh, does seem to have good credentials and hopefully the kids work hard for him and they can have some good success. So congratulations. Welcome to the Cavalier family, Chris. And uh, we'll be watching and we'll be we'll talking. Be watching. <laughs> what did I, what did I see too? a, a post that uh, Corona, the, the football team and football teams all over the state starting to get their summer workout programs going and everything. And it's just always, hey, it starts, it starts getting you fired up for football season when you oh, start yeah. seeing that stuff. Yeah, it is. And, you know, the prep spotlight or not the prep spotlight, the pigskin preview, not that far down the road for us. Not so look forward to that. I don't know what what annual one this is. It's got to be six or seven, right? Yeah, Six or seven. Yeah. <laughs> OK, it is forward. a great show every year. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, that gets us up to speed. Let's uh, come back, take a look at uh, some of the other sports going on, including the NBA. Talk a little Tiger. Caitlin Clark in the news. What else is new with that? We'll be back with some of that right after this. 
Jacobs Insurance Agency has served Shiawassee County and the surrounding areas since 1977. Just like Three Point Podcasts, we've had three generations, Gary Jacobs Sr., Gary Jacobs II, Brian Jacobs, and myself, Noah Jacobs, serving our community with offices in Waterford and Owasso on M21, just west of Home Depot. Stop in or go online to jacobsinsurance.com to get a quote or get your questions answered by our team. Jacobs Insurance is a proud supporter of our local schools and the proud sponsor of the Prep Spotlight. Insure everything, local, independent, and trusted. It's our family working together to protect yours. That's the Jacobs way.